So the next step that we are trying to do is think about the activities that you'll be putting together in a Gantt chart. You might have come across a Gantt chart previously when you were thinking about project management or doing other activities. But generally, a Gantt chart is something that you would do on a regular basis as your shopping list. So whenever you go to do your grocery shopping, it does help if you have a list of things that you might want to do. So you need to check what's missing in the fridge, what would you like to do in terms of the meals ahead in the week, or if you have any parties uh, planned so that you might need to buy extra sort of beverages or food for those kind of events that you wouldn't normally have. So a Gantt chart is nothing else but just a bit more advanced uh, shopping list. And this is actually a very useful tool for you because ultimately, once you've created that uh, uh, shopping list for you, you can then revisit this, see whether you are uh, proceeding with your activities to plan, or if you are able then to potentially try and get those activities on track if you've created so or uh, done something else. It's also very helpful if you have created this uh, uh, amazing plan that is working for you, and if you wanted to share it with somebody else, it creates a template for somebody else to try and follow up uh, this uh, activity for somebody else. So, what are the actual elements? Henry Gantz created it in the 1980s when uh, uh, planning was quite an important uh, task for everybody else to do. But what we are trying to think here is obviously you are the only resource for this course, but we want to try and break down the creation of the content, identifying of the activities that you might want to do, and putting them out to the public, and then potentially thinking about amplifying that potential content. So if you think about the general idea of creating a blog post, which is a good idea to show the passion for a particular subject area, say if you wanted to blog on LinkedIn. So you are not necessarily just getting a lot of traction just by getting the blog post noticed by itself. So it does help in terms of promoting that content to email some of your colleagues, to ask them to comment, to potentially share it on other networks, so for example, Amplify through Twitter, or any other Facebook post that you might want to do as well. So, what we're trying to do with this Gantt chat is a very simple shopping list that is showing the sequence of activities that you will do, shows any dependencies of the activity, so shows what is it that you need to do first, what is it that you need to do second, third, and so on, and also indicates which things could be done in parallel. So, whenever you're publishing something, if you're waiting for somebody else to do something, it's obviously a great time to try and uh, visualize this and actually show this in your Gantt chart so that you are clear of what you want to achieve. It's also a great tool for you to review your own activity when we come to the last stage of the course to see whether what you've planned to do will actually be materialized or whether that was realistic within the time that you were trying to achieve it.